Hey there everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and in this tutorial I wanted to cover how to get good color correctness. Now I've covered before how to use a gray card and I've shown that you've probably used a gray card before too. I'm only going to cover that very briefly because I wanted to move on to some advanced techniques and these advanced techniques will be in my upcoming book on the advanced uh, photo editing techniques for real estate photography and if you haven't done so yet, this is going to be the second book in the series, I would suggest getting the first book which you can get by clicking Clicking up here in the upper right corner, there's some information on getting that, which is simply just Photography for Real Estate Interiors by Nathan Cool. We're going to be moving into this tutorial toward those advanced techniques and what happens when you didn't use a gray card. And some people may say, well, I can click around on stuff in Lightroom and it's going to get me close, but not really. And I'm going to cover why that actually can be dangerous and why Adobe doesn't actually even recommend doing that. So anyways, with some advanced techniques in Photoshop, it's going to get us close and possibly also it's going to scare you into getting a gray card and starting to use that because some of these advanced techniques they're a little bit touch and go it's also quite cumbersome so I'm going to be moving through it quite fast there is the pause button and then of course for the long drawn out version of it I know I go through it uh, very quickly and talk very fast sometimes the upcoming advanced book should be out before the holidays and I'm going to be making an uh, announcement here on my YouTube channel when it's out and I'll have some videos covering some of that stuff after it does come out as well anyways let's dig into color correction right now without further ado let's take a look What's going on right now? So first, real simple, you've seen this before. This is me holding a gray card, and I've taken this picture, and I've really messed up the white balance on this by moving the temp slider up, the, the tint slider down, and all that you have to do, really, to color correct that if you used a gray card, you just go ahead and use this little dropper over here, and you go into the gray card, and you click it, and ba-boom, there you go. You've been color corrected. Now, you would just take these settings, which in this case, it measured 4650, and it measured zero for the tint, and then you would take those settings and apply those then to your other flashed images that you're using for the flash ambient blend or a single exposure, whatever you need anyways, you've found now what the correct white balance should be for the slit shot. And this was just, by the way, a flash frame. And uh, so what I usually do is I do a, a, a gray card for every type of paint color, and that way I can see if I'm off a little bit in some of the other stuff that I'm working on. Um, so I don't do it for every single shot. This house had this predominant color, and I really only gray carded just a couple rooms. But this got me going, and I got to see what was going on. And I can see that, yeah, that really was a true kind of bluish gray ceiling. It was kind of odd. Instead of having a white ceiling you'd find in most houses, that was fine. Now most people say if I didn't have a gray card, I could just go ahead and click on something white. Like, I've got this, this door over here should be white, so you click on that. That changed the white balance even more. It went down from 4600 to 4050. Go back on that. That's where we really should be. The reason being is that this isn't, even though it's white balance, you're not looking for white. What Adobe even says in their manual is that they want to find a neutral gray point. And that gray point is something that's important and we're going to cover that next. Let's take a look at an example for an advanced technique. So this is a finished shot that I did. Uh, oh, probably about a few weeks ago. It's a lot of white, and you can see that the, it's got some strange looking beams up here. So I took it and I screwed up the white balance on it so we can use it for this example. So what would I do in this case? I could try clicking around, try to find white, try to find a neutral gray, which is what Adobe actually recommends, but there's an advanced way to do this in Photoshop. Let's go ahead and edit it there. So right click, edit in, edit in Photoshop. Now, I'm going to go ahead and copy this with the Lightroom adjustments. Now, you could be doing this on a, a image that's already in a Photoshop already. So you could have many layers and you're just going to do this on top of it. We'll just do this with a single image. So let me bring that in so you can kind of see what's going on. So the first thing I want to do is add a new adjustment layer and add a new adjustment layer is going to be a curves layer. Excuse me, the wrong one. Layer, adjustment layer, curves layer. So now that I've got this curves layer, I'm not going to touch it yet. But what I want to do is I'm going to be eventually using this gray uh, point dropper. And that's basically what Lightroom is also using. But we need to find a neutral gray. I could just go ahead and click on this now and then start clicking around like I would do in Lightroom. But that's not going to do us much good without really knowing what's going on. So what I need to do next is to find that gray point. To do that, make a new layer, layer, new layer. And I'm going to call this gray. Now what we want to do is we want to fill this with a neutral gray. So the easiest way is to go to edit, fill, and then you want to fill it with the contents of 50% gray. There's a few different selections there. You want 50% gray. Okay, and that just covers everything with gray. Now change that blending mode to difference. Okay, 
it's going to look weird, going to look like this, but basically that now is showing us what uh, the opposite of what would be in gray. So the next thing is we want to find that threshold for gray. And to do that, you add an adjustment layer. Layer, adjustment layer, and this time a threshold layer. Now this is going to look kind of funky. It's going to have this white and black view to it. And what you want to do at this point is you want to start moving this slider until you start finding an area that's going to be neutral gray. Now to do that we bring it all the way over to the left which now we're in the zone of whites. This is similar to a histogram. You've seen that probably on my last video. Um, this is just the inverse of that. So what I'm doing is I'm moving this now to the right a little bit till I start seeing some of the stuff coming through like what would be probably a neutral gray. If I start from from the other end of it, this is in the blacks, and I'm starting to find out what the blacks are. But in this case, I'm looking at that gray layer below us, and that's where I want to see the difference. So anyways, long story short, we'll take that threshold slider, start it all the way at the left, start moving it to the right, and still until you start seeing some of these grays start to pop through, and I can start seeing them here. Now you have to be careful what you are selecting for the threshold for that gray, because if you start out, like if you notice when we started out at the very dark, there were some uh, other lit areas that started coming through. Those will be your first highlights that are starting to come through, and we don't want that. We want just the grays. Anyways, now that you have that go ahead and zoom in really close because you want to select a pixel right and you can see that's very pixelated if we just zoomed as with it all the way zoomed out and try to select a point you could be selecting one of the wrong ones that are not within the threshold anyways go back to our curves layer and then select that gray point dropper and then select one of those dark pixels okay now we can shut off the threshold and the gray layer will zoom back out and that's what it looks like with that adjustment that we did. That's without it with the tint and that's with it now with that adjustment. So that gets us really close to where the white balance is. Now this could have also changed some of the luminosity and why? Get a good idea in Lightroom. Look what happens if I change the luminosity slider, excuse me, the uh, white balance sliders. It's going to actually change the histogram. Why? Because if I put in a whole lot of warmth, I'm moving the yellows up real high and also some of the reds. So it can change the luminosity as you change some of your white balance. To avoid that in Photoshop, take that curves layer and change its blending mode to color. And now we're back to the same luminosity that we were working with. Now that's completely optional. It's up to you on what looked better. I kind of like this a little bit better. Now, this was one way to go about it, but it might not be the most accurate. So let's go ahead and just close that out. We don't need that anymore. We're going to move on to the second example. Now the next example was this room here, which has kind of a bluish wall. It has an old fashioned uh, cottage cheese white ceiling up here. And so I went ahead and I just messed it up. I went ahead and I took and put the white balance up. I warmed it up to plus 28. And then I took the, the red tint up to 22. And you can see it's an awful looking thing. So we need to color correct that. So we're going to do a different technique, very similar. Let's go ahead and edit in and edit in Photoshop. And of course, those Lightroom adjustments go along with it. So we have something completely messed up. Okay, now this is where this is going to get a little trickier. It's the same type of principle, but we have to find, instead of a gray point, we need to find the white and black points. So let's add that curves layer in first, because that's going to be the key to this. So layer, adjustment layer, and then a curves layer. Now what we need to do is we just want to put in a threshold layer. So we go to layer, adjustment layer, threshold. And we're only going to use this a couple times. So first off, we want to find our white point. Okay, or we can start with our black point. Let's start with that. So we'll move our slider all the way to the left. And then when we start bringing it back, we're starting to see some of the stuff which says, hey, those are blacks. But if you turn on and off that threshold layer, you're going to see that that's really blown out shadows. In fact, if you were to measure that, it'd probably be uh, F, excuse me, the uh, all zeros for your uh, your actual color, so six zeros, if you're familiar with that. So we want to find something that actually is like more of a true black. So we start bringing that up a little bit. We can start seeing other stuff start to show up. It's like, that's not looking too bad. Now we're starting to see something actually start showing up that probably is a black, okay? So that's not too bad. And usually it's a threshold I find to be about 20 to 30. And that seems to be about right. We're actually starting to see some real blacks start to show through, so that's good. Now, what I want to make sure is I don't just pick one of these that were early in the game here when we were sliding, but one that started showing up fairly recently, like probably down here 
in those pixels. If I shut this off, I can see that, yeah, that's probably where blacks are starting, which is on the shadow part of that leg. So it's not clipped, it's in that zone. In fact, I could probably even go down farther with this threshold and start seeing a good pixel to start with there. So now I've got some good pixels to start with. Now, the thing is I can't really click on the curves layer yet to do this. I could, I could just say, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and click on the curves layer and let me go ahead and select my black point, which is this bottom one here. And I could go ahead and click on that. But once I do, now I've got a different uh, set of colors that are gonna be applied to the image. So if I wanna find my white point, I've gotta first shut that curves layer off. Then I've gotta go back to my threshold again. Now, that's gonna do the opposite side. We're gonna find the white point. Go ahead and move that all the way over to the right. You can see the first things that are showing through those are blown out highlights. So that's not what we want. We don't want stuff that's clipped. We want to find the threshold. And you can see where that's gonna be on the histogram. It's gonna be in about this range. So stuff that sh starts showing through, and there has to be a little bit of prior knowledge. For instance, I know that the ceiling, cottage cheese ceiling, was white, okay? So, but I don't wanna click anywhere on it. I wanna click where the whites began at the threshold. And I can see that's happening here on the ceiling. So I want to get the first threshold point there. So I'm going to go ahead and move that out until I start seeing a couple pixels there. That's good. Now what I can do is I can go back to the curves layer and I can select the white point. But the problem is, is that with that curves layer, if I turn that back on, the black that was applied is going to be applied to it. And I don't want that. So another way around that, I can go ahead and just add another curves layer. So I can go layer, adjustment layer, excuse me, layer, adjustment layer, curves layer. Now I've got that one, and with its white dropper, which I'll go ahead and select here with the white point, I'm gonna get in really close and select one of these white points, okay? That's my threshold. Okay, now that I've got that applied, I can shut off this threshold layer, I can zoom out, and then I can see I'm fairly well corrected. But once again, this is too bright, so I need to take both of these layers and change their blending modes to color. Okay, now their luminosity is not being affected. Now we can see that kind of brought back the true color. Another way to do this too is to use one curves layer, you can set points. And I wanted to show you that too, and it's something I'm gonna be showing in my advanced book. So another thing I could do is when I find a threshold point, I can say, you know what, let's go ahead and find a threshold point for our whites. And we like it here, and this is just it as an example. I'm not actually gonna use this, but what you can do to save a point for later and just use one curves layer, is go over here to the uh, dropper tool, and the dropper tool has this thing called a color sample tool. And when you use that and you click on something, it leaves a little point. So when I sh turn off this threshold layer, I can see that little point, and that's where I know, hey, that's where I wanna click in. So I can make a point for my white, a point for my black, and then click in those. But in this case, I just made two curves layers instead, one for my whites, one for my blacks, and that gave me then a pretty good uh, kind of a white balance to the uh, compared to how the image really should look. Now I realize I went through that pretty quick and it might be a lot of new stuff to you if you've never worked with threshold layers. That's something that really isn't used that much in the workflow, especially for real estate but it does help you find where those boundaries are, where those colors are. And here's the problem that you're gonna be faced with. If, if you have something that's really far off on white balance and you didn't use a gray card, if you're trying to find a gray point, the colors are probably corrupt. So it's when you know where a possible white is or, or a black is, that's a lot easier to find than just where that neutral gray is. A neutral gray could be so yellow or so red that it's not gonna show up in that first advanced example that I showed there. But the last example that I showed where I found then the boundaries, the threshold of where white was and the threshold of where black is, then Photoshop knew on the curves layer how to adjust the curves out for those colors to compensate it. And I have a white balance that then is fairly close to what I think it really should be. Anyways, this will be coming out in the advanced book. And once again, if you haven't gotten the first book in the series, which is Photography for Real Estate Interiors, and up there that information link, you'll be able to get that. Also, I have a link to it directly in the description for this uh, video, so you can also go directly to it there. Anyways, I hope this video was useful for you and that you can use some of this in your photography as well. If you did like this video and you want to see more, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel. It won't cost anything, and as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, take care, be safe, and get out there and shoot something.